Hey everyone, what's up? We are back at it again for the next Earth Science Review video. This is still Unit 3 Astronomy, so it's the solar system and the planets today. So a little bit of background, of course, before we get into it, there's a little bit of a uh, couple concepts we need to go over in order to get the answer to these questions right. So here we go. So first we have to establish what we know about the Earth spinning. So it's called rotation. It takes about 24 hours on Earth. It brings the day and night. It brings the path of the stars, the moon, and the sun through the sky every night, and the rotation is counterclockwise. So these are the three facts that you got to know about rotation. And I also put a little picture here to give you an idea of what the spinning should look like. Next up we have revolution, which is sometimes confused with rotation, but this is the moving, the act of moving around another object. So it takes about a year, which is 365 Earth days, it causes the seasons to change throughout the year, and it also has different constellations visible through the year. So in the spring there's different constellations than in the winter that we could see because we're literally in a different point in space so you could see in my little image in the bottom right the earth is revolving around the sun and the moon is also revolving around the earth so you have to know the the difference between what a rotation is and what it causes to happen and what a revolution is and what that causes to happen so there's about three facts for each all right so now we're talking about the solar system so the solar system they say was formed formed about 4.6 billion years ago and they pretty much group the whole solar system together as forming at the same time so the Sun and the planets essentially pretty much are about 4.6 billion years ago they formed so these planets are almost to scale but they're not scale distance apart so here's the idea your little background on the planets so the first four planets, which are right here, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, these are called the terrestrial planets. Terrestrial. And they have some characteristics. Number one is that they are rocky, so we can walk on them. They are small. As you can see between the other planets, they're small. Um, they have not that many moons, if any. and um, they're Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. So we're gonna get to the order eventually, but for now, we're just gonna focus on terrestrial, these three characteristics. And then you got these, which are the four gas giants. These are called the Jovian planets, and their characteristics are pretty much the opposite. They are gas, they are large, they have many moons, and there's a couple other things we could say about them. They're mostly made of hydrogen. They are less dense because they're made of gas, and this is going to be more dense because we're made of rock, the terrestrial planets. Um, and that's pretty much the idea between the two, the two separate types of planets. Now, next, this is a top view of the solar system. Uh, what I want to point out, the reason why I'm showing this, is because the first four planets, planet 1, 2, 3 Earth, 4 Mars, look at the distance that they have to revolve around the Sun. If you notice, Mercury has to revolve this distance, right? But now look at Neptune, all the way out here. Neptune has to revolve this distance, and don't mind my circle, it's going to be horrible. So my point is, the further away the planet, the longer it takes to go around the sun. And that's for two reasons. Number one, the path is legit longer. And the second reason is that there's less gravitational attraction between Neptune and the sun because it's so much further away. So Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune all have longer periods of revolution or the time it takes to revolve because they're further away. All right, so that's the, the, the last pretty much difference. And the other thing I want to highlight about this is that between Mars and Jupiter is the asteroid belt right here. There is a belt of these giant rocks, which we're going to talk about in a little while. 
So that's the solar system. Pluto is uh, not considered a planet. It is a dwarf planet, so they don't. we don't really talk about it that much, to be honest. All right, here we go. So which event occurred approximately 4.6 billion years ago? Again, try to answer the question, pause it before I go over the answer. So the answer to this question is 4.6 billion years ago was when the formation of Earth and our solar system formed. There is a cheat to remember this. If you go to page 8 on your reference table, you can look at this timeline here. This is in millions of years ago. So if you look down here, 4600 million years ago is the estimated time of origin of Earth and solar system. So 4600 uh, 4, million is the same thing as 4.6 billion. So it's on your reference table if you can't remember it. Number two, planets that are closest to the sun are identified as, so if you go back here and look at my chart, the first four closest to the sun are terrestrial and they are more dense because they're made of rock. So high density terrestrial is the answer. There is no such thing as high density Jovian and there's no such thing as low density terrestrial. So those two are out. So you're 50-50 between high density terrestrial, low density Jovian. Okay, so now that we established the difference between the planets and sort of a couple characteristics, this is the main chart on the reference table that you wanna know how to read. So page 15, this is called the solar system data chart. It is right underneath the HR diagram. I'm gonna quickly run through each column. So first on the left side, the celestial object is the name of the planet or the sun or the moon. The sun is our star. And then you could see the, the planets do go in the correct order from the sun. So Mercury is the first planet and then Venus and then Earth and then Mars and then Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. And then the moon is just located at the bottom. So that's not a planet, just keep that in mind. So the first four here are your terrestrial and then your second four here oops are your jovian and in between here is the asteroid belt between mars and jupiter is the asteroid belt the second column is the mean distance from the sun it's in millions of kilometers just keep that in mind this is just how far the planet is away as you could see um, the further away you go the higher the number so neptune's the furthest period of revolution this is uh, the planet's year this is the time it takes to go around the Sun so the f again the further away the planet is D for days Y for years the longer the period of revolution the second one is period of rotation this is a day so how long is one day so you could see Earth is about 24 hours but this is gonna vary the pattern nest, uh, is in general that the gas giants, if you notice, have shorter periods of rotation than the other ones. Eccentricity of orbit, this is how oval the orbit is. So if the number is closer to zero, that means it's more circular. And if the number is closer to 1.0, that means it's more oval. So we're gonna get to that more in the next video when we talk more about Kepler. Uh, next one is equatorial diameter. This is just how, what the diameter is. It's just the length across the planet like this. Uh, the mass is just compared to Earth. So Jupiter, for example, is 317 times the mass of the Earth. So everything is just compared to the Earth. And the density is just how dense the planet is. And I just want to highlight the fact that Saturn is the least dense out of all of them. And another thing I want to highlight is that Venus, right here, has a shorter period of revolution than its period of rotation, meaning Venus has a day that's longer than its year. So that's another important fact. And another thing about Venus that I'm going to write on the bottom Venus has an atmosphere of carbon dioxide, which makes it the hottest planet in the solar system. So that's just an extra fun fact. 
It's not on the chart, but I would definitely try to know that. Okay. So now that we have an, an idea of how the chart works, we'll be able to answer some of these questions. So here we go. Compared to the terrestrial planets, so the terrestrial planets are, remember, the first four. The Jovian planets, or the gas giants, are what? So we want to compare these four to these four. When you start seeing planets, you want to turn right to this chart. So the Jovian planets we know are bigger, and they are less dense, and they have shorter periods of rotation. So they're definitely not more dense. They're not less massive because they're bigger. Uh, greater orbital velocities, this is speed. So when we get to Kepler, we're going to talk about the fact that the planets that are closer to the sun go faster. So this is not true. The terrestrial planets are actually moving faster. So the only good answer is D for this one. And you know what? Worst comes to worst, just check the numbers in the chart. All right. Next one. Compared to the terrestrial planets, the Jovian planets have what? So we're saying compared to the terrestrial planets. So compared to the rocky planets. The gas giants have what? Do they have smaller equatorial diameters? No, they're huge. So we could just get rid of those. So they have larger equatorial diameters. And do they have shorter periods of revolution? No, they have longer periods of revolution because they take longer to go around the sun because they're so far away. So D is the best answer. Which planet takes longer to complete one rotation on its axis than it does to complete one orbit of the sun? So one orbit of the sun is a year or the revolution. And one rotation is the day. So they want to know which planet takes longer to complete one rotation than one revolution. So there's only one that does that. And I highlighted it before. Venus has a longer rotation than it does its revolution. So it's a weird. B is the best answer. I just want to go back to this for a second. Check the other three, Mercury, Earth, and Mars. They do not have a longer period of rotation than its revolution. So just compare the numbers in the chart. Next one. This is considered one of the harder questions in this unit. So I wanted to just highlight it in the video. It says, the diagram below shows the paths of Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and a comet named Wild 2. So here's the Jupiter's, uh, Earth, and Mars, and here's Wild 2. It's just a random comet, so it's not a planet. What is the approximate distance between the sun and wild two when this comet is closest to the sun? If you look at this wild two path, this is the point where it's furthest from the sun, and this is the point where it's closest to the sun, right here at A. Coincidentally, the point that is closest to the sun is also the distance that Mars is from the sun. So this is tricky. It's the same distance as Mars from the sun. So you have to go here and check how far Mars is from the sun. And it's approximately close to 227.9 million kilometers. So B is the best approximate answer for that. That one's a little tricky. But now you know how to do it. Next one. Which diagram most accurately represents the relative diameters of Earth and Mercury. So for this one, if you ever want to find relative diameters or how many times bigger something is, you're just going to divide the diameters by each other. So they want to know Earth and Mercury. So pretty much how many times bigger is Earth than Mercury, because we know Mercury is smaller based on the equatorial diameters. So Mercury is 4879 and Earth is 12756. So you just do 12756 divided by 4879. And I'm going to plug that into my calculator now, so just give me a second. So I'm getting 2.6 times bigger. The Earth is about twice the size of Mercury. That's what this is saying. Two and a half times the size. So D, not two times the size. 
C, definitely not two times the size. B shows Mercury bigger than Earth, so that's wrong. So A is the best answer. Earth is about two and a half times the size of that. All right, we got a interior of three planets in the solar system. Again, this tends to be a confusing question, so I wanted to highlight it. Which inference best describes the interiors of the planets? So you could see Jupiter, rock core, Mars, iron and nickel core, Earth, iron, nickel core, and then it goes liquid and then rock again. This is rock and iron, nickel, rock, liquid, liquid, gas. The point is the layers are stacking by their density. So you're not going to see like the rock core mixing with the liquid because they're different densities. So they, they make layers depending on their densities. Anytime you see something about layers or, or solid liquids and gases, so there's solids, liquids, and gases, it's always something to do with density differences. Generally, the core is a solid and then it goes out and turns into liquids and gases. So it seems like there's a rock core and then liquid on the outer part of it. So it goes rock, liquid, this one goes rock, liquid, gas. So it seems like they all have layered interiors and density increases towards the center. So B is the best answer. And the reason density increases towards the center is because rock is a solid and there's gas on the outside. So that's how you know. This is a picture of something. It's 56 kilometers long. It's a giant rock. It's irregularly shaped, which means it's not a perfect circle. It's not a perfect any shape. Um, this is definitely not Neptune. It's, this is definitely not the Earth's moon. It's definitely not Mercury. This is circular. This is circular, and the moon is circular. So this is an this is a picture of an asteroid, and I wanted to show you a picture of an asteroid just in case uh, you would need to maybe identify what one looked like. On the topic of an asteroid, the asteroid belt it says is located between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. What's the approximate distance from the Sun to the asteroid belt? Well, you have to figure out what's the distance from the sun to Mars and what's the distance from the sun to Jupiter, and then the asteroid belt will be in between. So sun to Mars and sun to Jupiter. Sun to Mars, 227.9. Sun to Jupiter, 778.4. The asteroid belt's in between those. So what's the answer? C. 1103 million would be between Jupiter and Saturn, which is not where the asteroid belt is. 210 would be between Earth and Mars, which is not where the asteroid belt is. And 129 would be between Venus and Earth, which is not where the asteroid belt is. Based on the pattern shown above, which diagram best represents the correct position of comet's tails? So the fact to know about a comet's tail is the comet tail always points away from the sun. So you have to find the picture where they're all pointing away. So here's sun, comet's tail is pointing away, that's good. This is away, that's good. This is away, that's good. This is towards, this is wrong. B. There's the sun. This is pointing away. Good. Away. Good. Away. Good. This is not away. This is wrong. C. Here's the sun. Away. This is good. Away. This is good. Away. This is good. Away. This is good. This is good. D. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, wait. Away. 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 And this is on a slant. It's This is sideways. This is wrong. C is the best answer. All right, that, that is, wraps it up for um, solar system. So again, summary, uh, no rotation and revolution and what they cause, um, know the characteristics of both the planets and know how to read that solar system data chart. All right, I hope this was helpful and I will catch you in the next one. Good luck.